in tension across the Middle East. Even the previously stable monarchies that formed the Gulf Cooperation Council have fallen out. As well as wars in Syria, Iraq and Yemen, there's a diplomatic rift as the region's two competing powers try to outmaneuver each other. Our Middle East correspondent Yolo Abdafith looks at the proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran and how other countries have responded. Saudi Arabia's cautious foreign policy has changed. As Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman consolidates his position, he's pushing an ambitious economic plan called Vision 2030 and curbing corruption in the kingdom. Saudi foreign and security policy has gone into overdrive, a belligerent response to Iran's hard political game of supporting and arming militias in Yemen, Syria, Iraq and Lebanon. The Syrian war is one clear example. It's not gone really well for the Saudis. Uh, the war in Yemen has been a total disaster as well. Um, but the Saudis see Iranian influence, Iranian hands on both cases, and also the emergence of Hezbollah as a dominant force within Lebanon. So I think regionally they see Iranian influence in the region affecting their dominance. So I think Saudi is reacting to that. The United States supports Saudi as well as Israel. All three states see Iran as the biggest danger to their interests. Russia and Iran are also heavily involved in the region and closer to Erdogan's Turkey recently than they've been for a long time. In Lebanon and Qatar, Saudi and its allies were behind Hariri's resignation and cutting off ties with Qatar. The Gulf states are predominantly Sunni Muslim and lean politically towards the West, especially the US. There have been differences between Qatar and some of his neighbors in the past. But this dispute revolving around allegations of supporting terrorism and of being too close to Iran seems to be more serious. Qatar denies the accusations but has close ties with Iran, the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas. Kuwait offered to mediate as they're all members of the Gulf Corporation Council. But a meeting on December the 5th failed to resolve anything. Saudi Arabia, the Emirates and Bahraini leaders didn't even attend. People do not want to see these, these disputes. They want to work under the Gulf umbrella. They want to think about the scarcity of water. They want to think about how much do we still depend on oil only. They're seeking jobs within the GCC, moving freely. So I think, uh, you know, involving members of parliament and NGOs, it will also uh, invest into solving this problem. The Saudi-Iran Cold War is overshadowing the entire region. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman seems to be a man in a hurry to modernize the kingdom's economy and society. And Saudi's anger towards Qatar is against its independent approach and unwillingness to follow Saudi's lead. Qatar is not a state that is willing to just exist in the region. It's, it wants to play a major role, um, which is uh, quite new for the other neighboring uh, states. So maybe that could uh, have a hand in the matter. From the Gulf to the Atlantic, Arab people have endured bloodshed, families split apart, and are yet to enjoy stability and freedom. Recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel has damaged the U.S. reputation and will channel anger towards Israel and their allies. Iran's power is growing. Plenty of Gulf states are nervous about that, as they are of an unpredictable Saudi Arabian ruler. Yolo Avdavid, TRT World.